Hello and welcome to the NewsX Sunday Guardian Roundtable. Well, it's that time of the year when we take a look back as to what is happening and figure out the most noteworthy events of the year, the newsmaker of the year, the decisive events of the year. Of course, this is a year that has been dominated by COVID. By I think probably the second wave was the worst wave to hit India at least. A lot of us suffered. There was lockdown. Apart from that, we also saw the green shoots of politics start again. You know, there were the elections in West Bengal. There are now the elections in Uttar Pradesh that are coming up. So a lot is happening despite COVID. So joining me on this panel is a panel of political experts and watchers. I have joining me Radhika Ramaseshan. She is a consulting editor of the Business Standard and a columnist. I have Sandeep Ghosh. She's a political commentator and columnist. Uh, Kaveri Bamsai, former editor of India Today, an author and columnist. And uh, Sanjay Jha, he's suspended Congress leader and former Congress spokesperson also. Uh, Sanjay, actually, since this conversation started by one of your tweets, so I'll let you begin by saying whom you think is the newsmaker of the year, and then we'll take it up from there. Well, I, I think, honestly, Priya, first, uh, you know, a great day to all the panelists and to the viewers. You know, in my opinion, you know, we overdo politics in our country. You know, politicians uh, tend to get too much of publicity, uh, mainstream airtime, and, uh, uh, and I'll be honest, although I'm part of that entire ecosystem, uh, I believe we are terribly overrated just because we have access to media and, you know, one is able to get a lot more exposure. Uh, I think the true, uh, you know, person of the year or the newsmakers of the year, if you want to call it that, Priya, will have to be those who actually stood against the onslaught of the second wave of covid and uh, that India, I think, is still battling, no matter how much of chest thumping the government of the day might do, and actually look at where was the critical differentiator. Now, obviously, the nurses, the frontline workers, the doctors have been phenomenal. But in my opinion, the reason why many Indians are alive today is because they have got vaccinated. And, uh, and for me, the logical choice, therefore, is who supplied the vaccines. And clearly, it is the Serum Institute of India, where Adar Punawala and his, uh, you know, in his business, they took the call, the risk to actually have an alliance with AstraZeneca and Oxford in the UK. And at a time when the government wasn't even backing them at all, mm -hmm. you know, unlike other governments in the West, who actually funded corporates and encouraged them to produce vaccines and keep them in stock. The Indian government actually did not do anything at all until, you know, there were panic buttons in the month of March and April. So you look at Adar Punawala, in my opinion, he and his company or his team would be the persons of the year because today 90% uh, of the people in India who are vaccinated have taken COVID shield. I will also not take away credit from Bharat Biotech because they made their own indigenous uh, vaccine. But uh, Adar Punawala's ability to reach out and provide vaccines to a large section of India has to be the most outstanding effort in a very difficult time. I saw your tweet in reaction to uh, Sanjay. In fact, you uh, preempted you a bit, but you had said, why not uh, Bharat Biotech and why just... Is it just the Made in India uh, stand that makes you put Bharat Biotech up? Or some no, other no, I don't take away the credit from other Punawala at all. And it's a great India story. Whosoever has done it. I think the fact that, you know, all that point I made is that uh, the point I was making is Bharat Biotech maybe. Uh, ignored, but I think uh, it, it was up against a lot more. So, but the overall India story, I would uh, go with Sanjay, uh, whether it's Adar Punawala or to whatever extent Bharat Biotech did, I think that's the big story. And the world over, you know, half the people don't realize. I was talking uh, some time back uh, to an American architect who was fairly high up in the order. Now, he, when I told him about vaccination in India, he says, so where did you get the vaccines from? U.S.? And uh, people don't even understand uh, what we have done as a country. I think that's a huge, huge uh, uh, story and something every Indian should be proud of. Kaveri, uh, beyond the vaccination and the vaccine makers, uh, who do you think uh, uh, dominated the headlines? For me, it was two people, actually two, uh, two communities. One was the Indian farmer. I think he stood up to the government uh, for whatever reason, self-interest, call it self-interest. But they stood up. They showed that it was uh, possible to make uh, these very invincible people look uh, a defeat in the eye and to give, give in, again, for whatever reasons. But the government did. 
Tell me if you can hear us. Will you leave and rejoin? Meanwhile, I'll ask Radhika that question, uh, uh, especially in terms of politics. Radhika, who do you see dominated the headlines? Yeah, I was also tempted to talk about other Punawala, but since uh, two of my uh, pan uh, co-panelists have already spoken at length about uh, uh, the Serum Institute and its, uh, you know, the stellar contribution it has made. I mean, let's not, let's contextualize it. Of course, you know, India has a legacy of uh, vaccines right since after independence. I mean, from birth to almost till death, I mean, you are vaccinated with one form of vaccine or another. So, but since you asked spe specifically about politics, I think my newsmaker of the year would certainly be Mamta Banerjee for reasons right and wrong. I mean, let's take a more rounded view instead of you know going rara or instead of uh, running her down completely. I, uh, the Bengal elections. I mean, let's just uh, turn the clock back a bit. Uh, the general kind of uh, projection was that the BJP was uh, you know sweeping her out. Uh, I think there were just a couple of uh, Bengal-based journalists who kept predicting, no, this is not going to be the case. It's uh, Mamta is returning, probably with uh, with bigger numbers. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, you know, whether you, uh, I mean, whether she staged her a bout of histrionics in the end or whatever, the point is that she carried the campaign right up to the logical end. And consider that BJP had pressed everybody into service, right, from Modi down to the last worker in West Bengal uh, with the backing of the RSS. It was a formidable opponent. There's no doubt about it. And there Mamta was all alone. Mamta with probably her nephew and uh, maybe Prashant Kishore in the background. But that it was. And she kind of battled the whole uh, uh, election right through the logical conclusion. So uh, she would definitely be <clears throat> the newsmaker of the year. After that, no doubt she's floundering a bit. Her ambitions are, have become manifest, but then what's wrong? I mean, everybody can be ambitious. I mean, you just, your strike rate may vary. I mean, you may, uh, you know, hit a pot of gold somewhere and then you may be forced to withdraw in another place. So I wouldn't take her, I mean, I wouldn't have too many issues with her ambitions or with the kind of rather patchy equation she has with the Congress, I mean, which I think uh, uh, Sanjay Jha would be able to elaborate much more. I mean, I for one, I can't swallow this whole idea that the opposition has to be led by the Congress. It is the only other pan-Indian party after the BJP. I mean, we can have a whole debate on the pan-Indianness of the Congress in the, uh, uh, in the present times. So, but uh, Mamta is kind of, you know, pushing herself. And to a lesser extent, I would even put Kejriwal, again, another person, you know, whose ambitions, whose aspirations to go beyond Delhi are manifest. He's not had astounding success so far, but again, the Chandigarh uh, yeah. results are uh, interesting. Uh, so these two would be the political uh, news makers as far as I am concerned. Good to have you back, Kaveri. You would, Thank uh, you. Got yeah, I, yeah, I was talking about the Indian farmer. I felt that he's, uh, you know, he he and she. Uh, it's important to make the point that the Indian farmer is a woman as well. 65% of farming is done by women. Uh, so I think they look the government in the eye and they sort of bore them down and uh, the government had to give in. And I think the second group of people I would like to nominate is the Anganwadi workers. I think down the line, if it comes to communicating what COVID was, what uh, uh, the vaccine was, uh, you know, how contagious it was, uh, creating those self-help groups, organizing dry rations, down the line, if you look at each and every village in India, it's the Anganwadi worker equipped now with better technology, who is actually going down there and explaining uh, every healthcare initiative that's taken right up there in Delhi. And I think we often tend to forgive, uh, forget that and uh, we don't pay enough attention or in fact, we don't pay them, them, uh, them enough. But um, they've been recognized by some of the, you know, the best uh, uh, medical uh, uh, organizations in the world and including by Lancet. And I think we need to acknowledge them as well. So for me, really, it was learning from, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, the so-called rural India and the Bharat as we call it. it. For me, it was the Bharat story that was amazing. That's true. That's a good uh, takeaway. And non-political groups uh, also. But uh, Sanjay, just to get back to politics, uh, Radhika uh, very interestingly raised the question of uh, Mamta Banerjee. Uh, do you see her as the most decisive, the rise of Mamta Banerjee as the most decisive political event? Or do you think she'll go the Arvind Kejriwal way? You know, one election, but uh, doesn't work nationally. Well, you can see, Priya, that uh, there are already uh, reverse migrations happening in Goa from People who left the Congress to TMC, they are returning back uh, to the Congress. So, you know, I do believe that the opposition, if it has its own internal competition, and why not? I mean, Mamta Banerjee has every right to believe, you know, that, you know, she can have, uh, she can be a principal stakeholder if the BJP diminishes and the opposition remains fragmented, but the TMC is looking in pole position. So I think there is a legitimate right that she has to aspire to be prime minister. But I do feel that there is no denying that this will call for a major political rebranding of Mamata Banerjee. You know, I mean, uh, the fact is, and I don't want to sound as if, you know, one is being, you know, indulging in mortification of the TMC, but it still seems like it's like an Eastern party. It's like a Bangla party. You know, it has still got the, the, the perception of being provincial. And in India, when you do a national election, look at the way Narendra Modi wins the general elections although the BJP doesn't do well in many of the state elections. The reason is because the, the, the general imagery is that this man can run the country. Now, that is the battle for 2024. So I think that's where the handicap comes in. Now, Prashant may be an intelligent uh, political entrepreneur, but you know, th there are limitations to how much you can actually juggle around that, you know, you know what I call is the branding all across the country. It's a tough one. The, I, I agree with, with I think, uh, you know, what is said about the Congress being, you know, you know, completely usurping the position of being the fulcrum of the opposition, because I have done my own analysis. And out of 286 seats in the Lok Sabha, West Bengal, uh, Bihar, uh, Gujarat, Odisha, you, you, and you, you add, you know, the Tamil Nadu, you know, the Congress and include Telangana and Andhra, the Congress is extremely enervated. It, it'll be lucky if it gets even 10 seats out there, if it fights on its own. If it fights with an alliance, it might get 20, 25. It's nothing. It's 286 seats gone. So I do believe that there is a lot of logic in the Congress today being questioned for, you know, just kind of uh, uh, very, with a lot of hubris, assuming that this is my default position. And I do hope, and that's what I have written a piece recently, that Prashant Kishore may have actually triggered and re in the Congress. Because if you notice, Mrs. Sonia Gandhi not inviting Mamata Banerjee for that uh, opposition meet was the first sign that the Congress is beginning to wake up and take its own internal heat a lot more seriously. You know, while you focus on the BJP, if you look at Congress's political history, it has always been weakened first by its own allies who later on have gone and taken over its own bastions. Okay. We're going to take a break and come back. And also, I'm going to be asking the panelists, the non-newsmaker uh, of the year, who was missing in action? Was it a politician? Uh, if so, was it uh, the prime minister or was it the opposition <laughs> leader or was it a healthcare system? So what was the non-newsmaker of the year after a break? Hello and welcome back to the NewsX Sunday Guardian Roundtable. So we've been discussing the newsmaker and the events, the decisive events that shaped the year. But Sandeep, this ball is coming in your court. The non-newsmaker, who did you feel was totally missing in action uh, during the year? Who should have played a larger role? See, it's difficult missing in action and uh, somebody who botched up action. So okay. that uh, credit will certainly go to Rahul Gandhi. Nobody can take it away from you. Yeah, so he has been the uh, newsmaker for the wrong reasons. And he continues to do that. And uh, so uh, that's a totally uncontested win. But uh, beyond that, Sandeep, uh, you know, uh, uh, Rahul Gandhi has been at least saying the right things. It's not, you know, whether it was COVID, whether it was China, on whatever issues. At least he's been sounding uh, in terms of, on Twitter at least, he's been very active. Yeah. So it's like my saying that, you know, I tweeted something uh, about uh, an MP's uh, uh, tweet on that. It's like my saying, you know, the sun listened to me today and rose from the east. 
so that, uh, you know, there are so many people claim credit for the booster dose. Everybody said, Narendra Modi, listen to me. Uh, so right things is that. But do you think, for example, what Rahul Gandhi is going on talking about Hindutva and uh, Hinduism and the rest of it, he himself has either a clue, forget conviction, and you would consider that to be a right uh, uh, noises he's making. And uh, the problem in those is, you know, they are stuck in a time war. As uh, yesterday, uh, Aman uh, wrote a beautiful article in News 18, that, you know, uh, uh, they are so irrelevant in these issues. Uh, Modi has moved miles ahead, and so he does not even bother to respond to these inane uh, uh, bouts. So I don't think, you know, one part I would totally agree with Radhika, whether whatever happens to Mamta Banerjee next year or year after is a different issue. This year, she has been the political newsmaker. But where, really speaking, the person who could have, uh, you know, and everybody we have discussed, Modi went through probably his worst year. Uh, 2021 was his worst year. He faced setbacks on multiple fronts. We're starting from Bengal elections to COVID and everything else. And this is the time a leader of um, substance, at least Mamta Banerjee, tried to consolidate her position. And this is the time Rahul Gandhi could have proved his mettle, uh, rallying um, uh, you know, the entire opposition spectrum together. But he has been uh, uh, like an unguided missile, as always he has been, a, a sort of a rootless, unguided missile. So uh, clearly he is, and you can always say everybody, uh, as I said, the booster dose, uh, but still people don't know what booster dose to give. Even yesterday we were talking to some experts. There's a huge uh, confusion as to what is the dose to be given, whether that vaccine, if people are saying today Covaxin is the booster dose, uh, we have to give whether Covaxin can be made available or uh, is the Novavax or whatever. So there's a huge uh, uh, confusion out there. What about the Prime Minister's performance last year? Because he's also, you know, in terms, he's made the announcement of the booster dose, but there's still confusion. He did the whole farm laws agitation, only uh, caused a lot of discomfort to the farmers, only to do a rollback. Uh, the second wave was mishandled. You can argue states or center, but as Prime Minister, some of the blame does go to him. So how do you see his uh, uh, performance? Yeah. Radhika, yeah, you, you want to say? Uh, having been a six. Uh, yeah, having been a salesman all my life, in sales, you are as good as your yesterday's sales, okay, or in marketing. So a politician will also be judged at the end of the day how he is emerging. And I think that's the credit to Narendra Modi. At the end of the day, everybody would say he has, whether the, there was, as I said, there could have been problems on all fronts. But uh, look at his ratings. He has managed to uh, come out of that, and I think that's a credit. Adhika, your take on... Yeah, no, I think it's been a very patchy year for uh, Modi. Let's not forget what all of us went through during the pandemic. Then he was uh, forced to repeal the farm laws. I think that was a huge setback to his own ego and his own sense of, uh, you know, overwhelming uh, dominance over the polity. So I think on the whole... And, uh, you know, there were other uh, fault lines as well, which emerged in the Northeast... Uh, region we, which is seldom sort of flagged as a major discussion point. I mean, let's not forget there was a major border conflict when, uh, between uh, Assam and uh, Mizoram. Then there was, uh, uh, you know, the, there were the killings in Manipur. So, uh, you know, Northeast went through a very bad uh, patch as well. So, uh, you know, if you were asked me if the prime minister is the newsmaker of the year, I would say no, because it's been a very patchy kind of uh, performance that he went through. As usual, he allows optics to lift him out of uh, <laughs> some kind of uh, stagnancy. We saw that in uh, Varanasi. We saw that during the several inaugurations that he uh, made in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, to me, I think, you know, uh, the non-newsmaker would be Yogi Adityanath. Here, everybody was celebrating Yogi Adityanath as Modi's uh, putative uh, successor, if you wish. And uh, but, you know, th I think it's a very clever interplay of uh, the BJP's internal dynamics that has kind of kind of overshadowed uh, uh, Yogi Adityanath. He first he has mishandling of the COVID. Let's not forget those images uh. of bodies being dumped in 
the rivers of Uttar Pradesh, you know, no, no sort of space for cremation, no wood, no ghee, and people were being burnt with kerosene. Uh, you know, I had friends in Lucknow who died because uh, oxygen O2 cylinders were not coming. So it was a very, very bad kind of record that the Uttar Pradesh government uh, put up during yeah. the pandemic. Uh, so, uh, if you notice after that, Yogi's body language, he's been forced to withdraw a little. The Prime Minister has had to do, put out these very comforting images of him with his arms around uh, uh, Yogi's uh, shoulder and that kind of thing. But there is no doubt that Yogi has been forced to take a second uh, position in the UP elections. Of course, the final test will come in who has a bigger say in ticket distribution, but my own information is that it's not a yogi is not going to have his way through and through. So it I would imagine that he's not quite a newsmaker in uh, 2020. Good one. Any others, uh, Kaveri, that missed the boat? Uh, you know, Priya, I feel in a sense uh, this whole year has been, uh, 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 you know, when the Indian politician has his or her image has been really at its lowest point you know it's not just a matter of the indian cabinet being missing you don't you have you've hardly heard from any of the ministers uh Harshvardhan, uh, perhaps uh, despite being uh, a medical doctor completely mishandled the second wave uh so i feel that uh, this is a point in our uh, uh, culture and i think in our society uh, the way Indian families suffered and the way they were just left to their own devices during COVID, I think it was heart-wrenching. And I think that is something that uh, India will not forget. And I don't think it will forget it in a hurry, down the line, whether it's cities or villages. And I felt they, uh, I feel they felt abandoned by the establishment. They felt oh. abandoned by the powers that be. Um, it was no longer who you knew or how many people you knew who could get you an oxygen cylinder. You were left to your own devices. People you thought were going to be your saviors were not. So I think the Indian politician's image and his, so his or her sort of absence uh, at this moment when India needed them most. I think that is something that we will not forget. And I think that is something I take away. Priya. Yeah, th that absence. I agree with Kaveri. Yes, Sanjay. You know, Priya, I totally agree with what Kaveri mentioned. And uh, let, let me be very blunt here on your show. What is the real role of a prime minister yeah. or India's political CEO? Is you stand by your people in their hour of crisis. And I feel, you know, the way we are so casual in, you know, talking about Narendra Modi's ability to do atmospheric and optics at Kashi, it, it, it just reflects our own servile and subservient mentality. Yeah. You know, I have a prime minister, the country is dying and suffering. And we're Narendra, leaving, Modi, you know? Narendra Modi disappears from, yeah. the, from the front pages. He doesn't talk to the same people to him, he did four or five times just a, just a couple of uh, months before when India was hit by the pandemic. And then comes Kashi and the UP elections. You're not wearing a mask and you're doing this major razzmatazz and you're building up a profile, again, using religious symbols. To my mind, I'll tell you what, I believe the man missing in action throughout the year, including farmers, protests, etc., was the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And all of us, we are, I think every panelist here is an outstanding thinker and I have deep personal respect, including for you, Priya. And I want to tell you something. We need to demand political morality from our leaders. Yeah. You know, I'm part of the system, but I'll tell you, it sucks. If we guys are just going to sit down and indulge in the usual platitudes, we need to question, we need to demand, and hopefully one day things will change. And we need to demand accountability for the people who died and for the people who yeah. suffered. Families, there's not a single family in India, I think, that didn't suffer. Yeah. And we, we, we have just allowed ourselves to forget it. Forget, yeah. I mean, the prime minister was missing in action. The leader of opposition was missing in action. Yeah. Opposition parties, who came to console us? We consoled ourselves. I think it's the greatest tragedy. And I think this missing in action for me was that politician with his cap, without his cap, with his pagri, you know, every Independence Day appearing in a different pagri with different colors. You know, it's not going to, I don't think it will be enough anymore. And I hope it will not be enough. Yeah. 
no one was really the citizen of india yeah, whether it was the farmer or the anganwadi worker or the neighbor who came out I or see, a solo yeah, suit he's the one uh, uh, yeah he or she is the one who ultimately you know helped uh, helped each other we were the survivors exactly and the government let us down i think both the government and the opposition because we don't just select the government we also elect an opposition so i think both all all establishments priya i feel all all yeah. people in power whether it was the bureaucracy whether it was uh, uh the politician i feel every every powerful uh, uh establishment every force of establishment i feel let us down yeah so the year what of about the big media priya we are headline we are yes, silent Sadi? about the media No, I, I agree, Sandeep. I think the the media is definitely part of the establishment, and I think we are the first to look within ourselves and agree with that. I think Priya, even you will agree. I think I will agree, but I think the media's role during COVID was not bad. You know, in terms of being an assistant support system, or in terms of uh, you know getting the, we got panels of doctors in terms of education, in, in terms of information at least, information. which I put it out there. Yeah, yeah. I that's thought, social you know, media. That was social media, but I don't know how far mainstream media, other than, highlight, uh, other than deep, highlighting. Uh, And uh, you know, media reflected the gravity of uh, the yeah, pandemic. Yeah. Certainly, yeah. you know. I mean, it may have been done anecdotally. It may not have been very strong on data, but no, I don't think uh, the pandemic ever disappeared from the front pages yeah. of uh, newspapers. No, no, it's not just the pandemic, uh, um, Radhika. We are getting focused on that. But overall, do you think the media is playing the role it ought to? Um, that in, we agree with you. It's, it's not, especially in the in, with this establishment, uh, it plays even worse. But, uh, but yeah, with... let's 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 also look at one bright thing. I felt that this was a year, at least, where the Indian mind, you know, was globally sort of accepted. You know, you had a Kamala Harris, so you had a Parag Agarwal. I know we are very quick to own these, uh, uh, you know, NRI successes, but there was some little. Uh, uh you know sustenance there i i felt that you know uh, whether it was um uh, uh, the ceos that india uh, had all across uh, the world or uh, whether it was people in hollywood or whether it was uh, uh, even neeraj chopra the indian mind and one little body of neeraj chopra at <laughs> least we we had some sense that we were world beaters you know so that for me was the only decent part of the year everything else i thought and of course the farmers and um standing up and you know the fact that dissent could still be central to our culture and our politics you know that's a good yeah. comeback on the yeah. at least to see it coming Some up decent again. things happening in this horrible horrible year Yeah. Really horrible year, year that I think all of us are quite happy to see the back off and hope the next year brings with it some good cheer and some hope. But thank you all for this conversation and really wish you a happy and a safe New Year. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you, Priya. Yeah, always thank a pleasure. You. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.